All right, we're going to talk about how to make a standard curve, and we're also going to talk about how to use a standard curve in the next few slides. I'm going to use screenshots taken from Excel. Please note that um, uh, this is Excel as used on a PC. The Mac version may look slightly different, um, but it should be overall somewhat simple, similar, and the principles should apply. All right, so what is this? standard curve. Um, this depicts a, a kind of a cartoon diagram of a standard curve and there are a few things missing here. So um, down on the bottom um, axis, the horizontal axis, which is this axis, um, this is typically where we plot what is known as the independent variable. Okay. Independ variable. It's what we set or control. So in our lab we used protein and we had it in units of micrograms per ml. Okay, And the vertical or y-axis is where we usually plot, or pretty much always plot in science actually, what is known as the dependent variable. Okay, so that's absorbance, which is actually a unitless value, but um, just to ensure that we're meeting all requirements for the assignment and typical conventions in sci uh, science, we can use the units, um, absorbance unit, just uh, a U. Bit messy. Apologize for my handwriting. So a standard curve is a depiction, it's a graphical and mathematical depiction of the relationship between independent and dependent variable. Typically concentration or the amount of something versus a measure of some sort of uh, response in an instrument or another type of assay that is proportional to that independent variable. So in our case, in simpler terms, we have a set amount of protein in several tubes, and we look for the absorbance generated using the Bradford assay that results or measures that level of um, protein. So in other words, the bluer the solution is, the more protein present, and the higher the absorbance. So what we're going to do is take our class data, or take your actually your either your class data as provided by your professor, or um, if your professor approved it, you can use the data that you yourself generated in lab. And we're going to generate a standard curve. We're going to do that only using the absorbance values that we obtained for protein solutions, where we knew how much protein was in the tube. Okay, and we're going to generate a graph that looks like this, and we're also going to generate a standard curve equation for that graph. We're going to generate it in the form of y equals mx plus b, and we're going to rearrange to solve for x because we're going to actually know absorbance values, which are the y values. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. All right, so you need to open Microsoft Excel. If you don't have it on your computer, it's on the school computers in the library, or you need to borrow it on somebody else's, but you do need to use Microsoft Excel for this assignment. It's a valuable tool to learn how to use, and it'll serve you well in the long run to be comfortable with this very popular software. So you open Excel, save your file somewhere sensible, and make a backup so that you don't lose it. You're gonna open a spreadsheet, and you're gonna enter two columns of data. That's what we've got over here. Okay, so what you're going to do is uh, enter a column that is the independent variable, which is the concentration data, the, or the x values for the data, and then beside it type in the absorbance data that you collected. That's the dependent variable data, and it's the y value. Go ahead and type that into Excel. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to use your cursor and you're going to select that data. It's the next thing that you're going to do. Okay, and then you're going to go up to the 
Insert tab, and you're going to click on that. Once you do that, it's going to give you the options of inserting a graph, okay, or a plot. Now this is really important because what you're going to think is you should pick line because that kind of looks like what you're trying to make, but in fact it's very, very important that you choose scatter, okay? So choose scatter and you should choose the scatter type that does not have any lines connecting the dots. So choose this one, okay? And it's going to graph your data. So if you had highlighted the concentration units, it would have placed that on the graph as an, as an option. Um, this tutorial is only going to cover the very basics, not how to insert uh, axis labels or titles. That's something I'm going to leave you to play with on your own. But you should see a graph something like this, and that's very promising. So on the bottom we have the protein concentration, and on the vertical or y-axis we have the absorbance units. Alright, so you're not done with that though. You need to depict, you need to actually have an equation and an R squared value to go with this standard curve line. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on any of the blue data points. You could have clicked here or you could have clicked here or any of the blue data points, but you're going to right click on them and that will select all four of the data points and that will give you a set of options and when those options open as shown here in this screencast you're going to choose add trend line and then you're going to see something that looks like this in the trend line options area you're going to have the option of checking these off okay you want to choose them as I am showing here you want to display the a equation on the chart and you want to display the R squared value on the chart. And that's going to give you something that looks like this. Now your equation of course will be different because you are presumably using different input data. So, um, but regardless, what you should get are two things. You should get the equation for the line, and it is the line that is relating absorbance relative to concentration. Hopefully it's as straight a line as possible. The R squared value gives you an indication of how linear that particular line is or the quality of the data that you've grafted. The closer it is to 1, the better. We're hoping for at least something better than 0 0.90 for this assignment. And then what you need is you need to pay attention to the equation. So there's our equation and it is organized so that it's in a y equals format. Remember that the y is absorbance units and the x that is protein concentration okay your goal in all of this is to get a standard curve that allows you to use the absorbance data you collected for your unknowns and determine using the standard curve determine what the actual protein concentration is in micrograms per mil so you are going to rearrange that equation to solve for x because that's what we're really interested in. So over here I have retyped the equation, okay, and down here I have rearranged that same equation so that it solves for x, okay, and that's fine. You could do it manually. Then down here I typed in the absorbance values that I had for my two unknowns and in this column right here I'm using Excel as a spreadsheet, this is basically a giant calculator, and I've typed in the rearranged equation so that it is actually going to calculate the protein concentration for me. So you'll notice that what I typed in here is also showing up here. Okay, B13 is the reference for this cell. Okay, That is the absorbance value for one of the unknowns. So I'm saying take the absorbance value for that unknown, subtract 0 0.0468, I've got brackets around it, and then whatever that is, divide all of that by 0 0.0325. And when I do that, it solves for a protein concentration. So these are my two protein levels or concentrations, and they are in 
the same units that my standard curve is in, which is units of micrograms per ml. Okay, so, you know, I might be worried that I did the math wrong or that I rearranged that e equation incorrectly. So I'm going to do kind of an eyeball check on it looking at the graph. If my absorbance was 0 0.25 as it was for that first unknown value, let's look at the graph. An absorbance value of 0 0.25 falls right there. So what does the graph tell me? Let's interpolate. So move out from there and down. And I'm using my finger instead of a ruler. You could do this with a ruler, but nonetheless, it shows me that my absorbance should be like somewhere around 6 micrograms per mil. And when I look at the calculated value at 6.25, that's good enough for me. That really gives me some confidence that I set that math up correctly. Likewise, my absorbance value of 0 0.3, if I look for 0 0.3 on my graph, it should be here and if I drop that line down these are hardly straight lines you know it's somewhere between 5 and 10 you know roughly seven and a half and the calculated value is 7.79 so that gives me some confidence that I'm doing this math correctly so at this point I'm not going to show you any more steps but I am going to make a few points you want your final graph to not quite look like this I'm going to point out some of the things that you're going to want to do you're going to want to change this to the title required in the assignment. I would recommend deleting this. You can click on it and delete it. And the other thing that you're going to want to do is label your axes. So you can do that by, uh, you should be able to do that in a number of ways of Excel. You should, for example, be able to insert a text box um, into that area um, down here and here is where you're going to want to have your axes labeled. The axes labels should include units. So the bottom or horizontal axis should be labeled as protein, and then in brackets, the appropriate units, micrograms per mil. And the vertical or y axis should be labeled absorbance, and then the appropriate units, which in this case would be bracket a dot u dot. And that about uh, completes this tutorial. Good luck making your standard curve. One common place that students go wrong is plotting their unknowns. You absolutely never plot unknown data on a standard curve. That defe defeats the whole point of making a standard curve. So there's a couple little tips for you, and I hope you're all successful in making your assignment graphs.